Right. So all these global variables um, for audio, we take the name and then in preload, we are setting where those files are and they are under a sub, you know, a sub root folder of assets, right? And we, we made this folder called assets using um, the file there. So preload is a way to prep our content that we're bringing in to be accessible. Um, we are setting variation. So some browsers don't support all file types types um, for audio. And you'll note that we can put like an extension here if we wanted to, but it, we don't have to. Oh, and now it doesn't want to load. Did something funky. Let's undo all the way. Let's reload the page. And it closed out my file. Cool, 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 cool. There we go. So as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, M4A. So you could have either file type specified there and it still should play no matter what. Like this one doesn't have one. So it's optional. However, when we do get into images, uh, we will need to specify for those. There might be something like image format option like this as well, but it's not worth getting into. Um, so then yes, we do have initial things are, that are happening in setup, right? Setup happens one time. So these things are declared and then everything in draw is looping continuously. So we did have um, an integer called X changing its value over time, right? We could see another integer evolving down here because draw is looping, right? Um, using those different new variables to update um, different points in your shapes and your color. And we played some audio. Um, with audio, we can do like a dot play or a dot loop. Um, there's also dot stop we'll, we'll be doing today. So anybody have questions? Hopefully this like sparked some confusion for someone I can help clear up. I had uh, a question about the print function that's after the, the if then loop for the Z. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is that doing? Cause like it, it, I, cause to me it looks like you're just printing like a statement, not like a thing. And is, is that like what the console is showing? Yep. So the console down here is, is gonna, whatever you put in parent um, quotations, it will print that. So, poo. Print being printing it to the console, right? Not like putting text on the canvas. Correct, yeah. It's just to access the console here. So by putting, you know, Z equals, we're, we're just assigning what that is going to be for this value. And this is, so we're, we're actively printing whatever the active value of Z is. So we could just say print Z and that would print to the console as well. Okay, so that so that z equals so that's just the label for it. Yeah, because like if we were to say print x now, and we play this, which one is which? I guess the top one would be z. Yeah, you know. It, but you don't really know, yeah. Yeah, so that's why having that label is helpful. Um, there is also something 
something goofy about the plus. I don't really know what that what that entails yet. Um, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, that's a good question. Anybody else have questions? I guess the, the two more major things are making sure you, you grasp how these variables are working as containers, right? Like how, how they're actively changing and updating, as well as these conditions. Like how does a condition work? And why we why we use it. And these are pretty, you know, for somebody new to coding, these are pretty complex, um, you know, components to tackle. Okay. 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 I know, um, I know deep down in my soul that um, unless, unless miraculously a higher percentage of everybody has already coded before, I feel like we're in, we're, we're in for a rough patch. I feel like um, a lot of people probably didn't do the exercise or, you know, I don't know. I usually have a lot more questions. So I'm definitely uh, right to be worried here, I, I should say. But I am only one person. You gotta come to me if you need help, I suppose. So um, this exercise we're gonna be diving into is fairly long. Um, and even we got through last class to the bottom, but then I also added a couple other um, uh, where is the bottom uh, there was 16 steps here I mean I reformatted the whole thing it took me like two and a half days to do this but then I um, added a few more things at the bottom I noticed that a lot of people end up using my exercise or part two here as a guide, you know, to, to be able to figure out how to incorporate content into your own work. So I wanted to make sure that whatever was in here kind of is upholding my expectations of what you guys should be thinking about. So hopefully we'll get through everything in class. Uh, if not, uh, we do have everything notated down here. And um, by this time, if we get down to like the 17, you guys should be able to continue on your own outside of class. And it's probably a good thing to pop back in like, you know, like tomorrow evening or whatever and, and finish it anyway or review it so that um, everything's sticking, right? I so. Have yeah, I go ahead. One more question though. Uh, so, so, so the code here is constantly looping, right? For this program, because I've worked with like Python before, and it's like once it gets to the end, it terminates. Yep. So uh, does that? So does it like go all the way back up and like redefine the global variables and stuff? It does not redefine the global variables because those are not changing; those are just static. Um, it's just looping everything in draw. Yeah, but if I if I try to set a, like one of the variables to like add one every time, would it like? Oh yeah. Obviously, do okay. It's actively updating. We're just not like the program doesn't read down back through here every time. Like you know, it doesn't loop this code. Um, things that are happening behind the scenes, like you can see here in console. Yes, like we're changing the value of z here, but we're not reassigning z the value of zero. Right. Yeah, okay. I was just wondering if it would read it like all the way from line one again. Right. Nope. It only is going to read everything in between um, the draw here. And then uh, we will be in, like establishing another function today 
for mouse clicking. And it also then does read down through that. Um, Cause obviously if you're clicking your mouse, it has to check for it. Um, but it's only based on when you click. It's not like looping stuff when you're not clicking. So we'll, we'll cover that again. But yeah, that's a good question. And um, all those types of questions like, like that, like, you know, um, maybe some confusion on exactly how, how that's working. We totally should be able to come in. There's, there's a couple of questions I've had recently too. I have, I have to come in and look up some stuff. Um, but if we go into the reference and we look up draw, um, it should, it should go over in, in detail, like what everything is. There are some things I've looked up and there's like, there's zero description. I don't know if it's, you know, they're just still working on things or what, but, um, most of these reference pages are pretty awesome. So, and another thing too, is like, it'll go over content like that you might be able to, um, additional things to be able to access. Um, cause a lot of, a lot of learning to code, like I said before, is just learning how to perform your own um, research and troubleshooting and investigations. Um, yeah. So I think I'm gonna sit down real quick. I've been standing for like three hours. Tables funky here. So yeah, I want you guys to go to um, my website, head over to this part two of exercise four, and you're gonna wanna download the zip file, download this text file, and then, um, get open a P5 window as well. Um, so depending on your setup, obviously I know you gotta watch me. Um, you know, you might wanna put like your editor and your, um, our class website in the same, same window, just a different tab, it's up to you. Um, I'm going to keep it all open unless somebody has a preference. They can't. Yeah. And if you guys can't see things, I could totally like increase or decrease, um, sizes of things. So totally just let me know if you can't read something. So yeah, get these two things downloaded. Give you a minute or so for that. So I did have a bunch of little minor hiccups um, last class and I went through and I think I've updated most of them, which is why I kind of uh, cut my arrival pretty tight. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to open. You guys are going to just start a new tab. I'm just going to open the class demo page that I already had. Um, actually, let's see, copy that. And then Oh, no, we're going to be deleting that anyway. Mm. 
Yeah. So you'll want to create a new file. Um, we could delete everything that's in there. So we're going to copy and paste stuff. Uh, you want to name this accordingly. You will probably come back to reference this, especially if you're semi new to code. Uh, definitely want to make sure you name it correctly so you remember where this is for later access. And then next step we're going to want to do is go up to sketch and then add a new folder and call that new folder assets. And then if you downloaded and unzipped that, that zip file, you should have about, I think it's 20 files. And so you'll drop this little arrow down next to assets and upload file. And then you'll drag and drop all those 20 in. I would leave it until you get most everything on the left completely populated. And then even after everything looks like it's done, I'd wait another few seconds. Um, we had one student last class that something appeared to not load correctly. Okay, so this is getting us all prepped up. We were getting our assets in there. Everything's named. And then all we have to do is paste in the initial text that I gave you guys in that text file. Can't even click in here now. Weird. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you guys. I had to refresh the page. But um, if you do that and you haven't saved yet, you'll have to redo what you just did. So, which is why I'm about to say, once you have this pasted in, you've got your assets folder set. You've got all the images and audio files uploaded to that folder and you have it named. Let's go ahead and save. Yep, yep, yep. And we should be good to should be good to start trucking here. So I uh, I purposefully set up this and left in uh, an error that I had when I was converting this and actually two, two different errors. So because I was converting from Java to JavaScript and um, you know, there's different syntax and different parameters based on libraries, some things are not gonna work correctly. And I was progressing through those and uh, in the process I also was changing things so ran into a couple of stumbles. So if we just try to run this as is, we're gonna get an error down here in the console and it's telling us something about lights. Um, had problems creating the global function lights. So if we look up here, um, it looks, I mean, it looks fine there. But then when we look at the other location for lights, see this doesn't tell you where, you know, what line or anything, but if we look here, this lights is actually a color of a function. It's not white, right? So what's really happening is lights is a function in P5. And we can't create um, a variable using a function name. So we need to change that to something else. And um, we don't actually need to change the, the linking to the asset um, because the asset name is still um, 
is still just lights.jpg. So we don't, we could just leave that, assuming that we remember, um, you know, that it's linked to that. So all we need to do is change this thing lights. So what, um, what I did on the exercise is just, I, I named it as the character for that scene, just like I did with the ET. Um, and his name is Jack Skellington, which I didn't know, I didn't remember at least, that he had a last name. Um, and then we also have to make sure that we change the lights at the top as well. Okay. So the top name, that's our declaring the name. And then um, down here, this is declaring the images. So if we play it now, we all should not get any errors in the console. So that's a good sign, meaning we've corrected that previous problem. But as you probably can see, if you're caught up, uh, we can't load the content. The preview is just endlessly loading. So there's something else going on and it's not telling us what. Right. How do you guys progress from here? With the Chrome developer tools. Yeah. I mean, before I even did that, before I remembered that, oh, you know, there's, um, cause I'm used to working in processing, which is its own app. So there's no developer tools for the app. Um, so I was just systematically going through and like deleting everything and just checking one thing after another or not even necessarily deleting, but like commenting everything else out and leaving one on until I, until I got to something and figured it out. But yes, developer tools. So if you guys go up to the top right, um, and I will note that somebody last class had Firefox and they were getting a separate error that I am not getting. It didn't appear to be uh, impeding on the actual exercise, but it, it, it is a separate error. So if you click the little menu button at the top right, I'm on Chrome, uh, but it should be pretty similar for most browsers now. And we go to more tools or for um, Firefox, it'll be developer tools. And then we're looking for, um, once we open that up, we're looking for the console tab. So you probably start at elements here and we just click over to console. And so the easiest thing to do is, is to realize that there's this little circle with the line through it. You guys can always clear that console. Can I zoom? Yes, right? the little slash line there. Um, can you guys see me zooming in like this? Anybody? Yes? No? No, I don't see you zooming in. You can't see my mouth, my uh, cursor zoomed way in? No. Damn. We just see the cursor over the circle. Yeah, damn. I can zoom it all the way into like full screen almost, but oh well, um, that's a bummer. So yeah, the little clear console button, that'll clear it out. You also have the clear console down here in the P5. Um, but anyway, so now if we hit play again, we should see some things pop up. And I will note that the dev tools, the yellow, the yellow um, error indicator, that's something that's, um, from as far as I could tell, something to do with the library for P5. Um, nothing, nothing that we really have to worry about as far as I could tell. Um, but we do have to look at these red, um, red errors. So we just read through them, try to make sense of it. It looks like it's dealing with something with sound. We keep looking, it says something assets and then knock walk door open. 
The next one's germ U-M. What do you guys think happened? Uh, it's trying to reference assets that we didn't import or you know, we're using the old name, so it's not finding something labeled that. Totally. I copied and pasted um, like each of these blocks of code, or not this one, we didn't use images. I copied and pasted all this from part one, and I got as far as changing the name for the top, and then I went through and was like, okay, started on the images, did not go through and finish. So, yep. Totally correct. We need to just name them correctly. And so you could pop open the sidebar for your assets. Um, you could use this vertical column division separator to drag it out if you want. So you could read the whole name. Um, and then yes, we do just need to rename these. And all of them should just be the same as, you know, like the, the variable name. Um, but you do want to make sure you're using the right case. And we don't want to delete the assets or the slash. That's um, like a root folder, right? It's directing us to that folder. So we want to leave that assets there. We want to leave the little hyphen there. And Okay, uh, I think that should be it. We can collapse that um, assets folder. And I'm gonna shrink some things around here. Should be able to play now. We can close the console as well. Um, I am getting another error. Let me rerun it and see what it says. Well, it loaded once, so I'm not sure why it's not loading now. Weird. Um. I'm wondering if my internet kind of went funky there. You guys can still hear me, right? Yeah, you're still there. I can hear. Okay, because I had the little mini window to show like who's talking just disappeared all of a sudden too. So I was like, just making sure. Oh, there it goes finally. Geez, that was like super long. Uh, uncaught, uncaught type error. Yeah, length of undefined process. Um, I don't think that's anything to do with what we have to worry about. Push process, no. So uh, for now, we could just close that developer um, window. So we just have more real estate here. Can everybody read my code still? Is I, hopefully that's uh, large enough. It's still there. Yeah, it's good. Okay. This way everything's like on one screen. So we should have this loading now. Um, I actually muted my site, but if you run this, we should hear this like elevator music going along in the background and that's it. We don't have any kind of interactions happening. Um, the audio doesn't change. That's all we have. And, you know, if we look down through into draw, all we literally are doing is drawing a background. And in setup, we're looping um, one audio file. That is it. So um, we're gonna get into copying and pasting things now, um, since we went through most of the error stuff. So we are on step five and friendly reminder to save. 
Um, Cause you know, the power could go out or you're like me and the browser just lags and glitches or signs you out for no reason. So yeah, I guess that could be a good thing to try to remember to do is like, if you have like a tab open with, with uh, P5 and you were working before and you go back to that tab to work, it might be good to like refresh, you know, the, the whole um, website before you continue because it definitely did sign me out um, the other day because I'm assuming that uh, I had a tab open. I kept working the next day and just in the middle of typing and just signed me out and lost some, I know lost a couple of lines, but, um, cause I was saving frequently, but so step five, we're going to add a couple of variables. You can either type these in or copy and paste. And these are just variables. So we're going to paste them. You could paste them right with the other variables if you want to keep things organized and just assigning a value of zero to them. And after we name a new variable, we can now use it in the program that we're making. So we're going to go ahead and copy step six here. There's a bunch of stuff. So go down a little slowly there. And we're going to delete the background that's being drawn in draw first and then paste all of the rest. And uh, should be pretty well aligned. You could do a shift tab if you want things to be super clean. Super clean. And then uh, we can go ahead and play that. Um, is anybody getting like blank lines, in, like a return, a double return down on these or no? Something like that. It was before for me and now it's not. I'm kind of just confused why it's going back and forth, but it's good. Either way, it's just, um, you know, there's a note reminding you that like all the spacing doesn't really matter. You know, sometimes you might copy something from somewhere and it might show up like this. You know, it might just show up all in one line, like huge strands, which it'll still run. It's just harder to read. So keeping things organized like this. I even like to have, you know, different spacing between different elements. So I know, you know, visually where chunks of information are. So if we run this and we uh, move our cursor around, we should see that we are getting this, these shapes to move, right? They're floating around, just doing their shape things. Um, give me one second. My voice is, or my throat's like a little, I don't know, dry or still remnants of having a cold or something. I realize, oh, I have a humidifier right here. So um, shapes are moving. They're changing color based on our mouse moving, mouse X, mouse Y values. And if we don't move, they're not doing anything, right? So if we go in and take a look here, everything that we just pasted, first of all, we can note that everything's encapsulated in this new block, um, this new if condition. And it's setting a question, if scene is zero, right? Two equal signs is a uh, checking it's not assigning a value, it's checking a value. So if scene is zero, it's going to do everything, execute everything after that between these brackets, right? 
And not only do we have these comments that I put in here of like what, where the bracket is ending for these different segments, even for draw, but if you, this is really helpful to know that if you click next to a bracket, um, either before or after a bracket, it should show you where the end of that bracket is or the beginning is, right? So you can logically see where things are. So you don't necessarily have to have these comments, but I prefer them. And if you guys have it, it helps me troubleshoot your projects easier. You know, other people looking at your work. Um, super simple to keep up with and it definitely helps. But so not only can we add comments, can we click on these brackets to see the ordering, the hierarchy, but we can also note that, um, I, I probably said this before, but the alignment, right? The if function is nested inside of the draw, so it's tabbed over and all of this other stuff is nested inside the, the if because it is um, tabbed over as well. So we'll talk about all of these pausing things in a minute. They're relating to audio. But um, we do have this other chunk of content here. And it starts with a push function and ends with a pop function. Um, so this stuff you, you could look up to if you wanted to. Um, push, pop, they work in conjunction with one another. Push, pop. And what it's doing is, uh, they, this is a good way of phrasing it that they, they put on that reference page. Starts a new drawing state and restores the original drawing state. So a couple things we're doing in here that kind of wreck havoc on the rest of the program if we didn't have push pop is we're changing the origin point from the top left, right? Like that zero, zero. We're moving that down to a new location. We're setting what that location is. So this is helpful for things like rotating because if we didn't have this translate, like if we comment that out and we hit play, that translate's gonna be in the top left. So you can see the shapes like barely moving up there, right? So um, by having the translate, that's working. By having rotate working based on mouse X, Y values, that's moving based on our, our movement of our mouse. And then um, at the very end, the pop is restoring everything back so that um, things go back to where they need to be. So for example, if I were to copy all of this content between push and pop and go down and paste it again, so the same stuff inside push pop, same stuff out. One of them is drawing in the center where we translated, the other one is drawing at the original. Why? Because this pop is restoring it back to the original. So hopefully that makes sense. Not everybody needs to use push pop in their projects. It depends on what you're doing. And it's usually based off of transformation kind of stuff. So, um, but I, I thought I'd uh, integrate it so you guys get a, a visual example. Anybody have questions yet? Wait, so, so when you, when you move, can, could you like move, uh, translate the origin point at like in the setup code or something, or like at the beginning of a draw so that like you're always working in like the middle rather than from the top left? Oh yeah, you totally can. Yeah. 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 I mean, we could, uh, you know, so it, so it's not just limited to putting under the draw function, right? Right, so if you follow this, I can I could put it in setup, you know, I could get rid of the push pop, and then I could play this, and it'll, oh, it maybe it doesn't. Oh. In processing, it totally does. Let's put it here and see. But that, that should have like moved everything up to the top left, right? Oh yeah, or no, it shouldn't have because I, I translated it up here in setup. So unless translate is only a draw thing. But either way, to your point, um, 
you can just set it up once. Um, be called within draw reset when it begins again. So yeah, you, I guess maybe you can't have it in setup, but you could just take it and put it at the top of draw, right? And then, then it's always going to be set in the middle. However, then if you want to go and say, oh, I want to make a rectangle at 500 by 500, and it's going to be 100 by 100, then go. And when you play this, you won't even see that because it's out of the frame. And just to show you, if we comment this out and play again, there's, there's our 500 by 500, but it's being affected by the rotate because our push pull is not doing anything. So that's why it's, it's nice to use the push pull. Um, you can isolate things, you know. Um, you could even do like the same exact thing, except have the, oh, did I delete the, it's right here. Could have this 200 by 150. And then you have two different locations, right? Because you have the pop putting it back to normal and you're starting a new one with a push. Anyway, this is getting down a rabbit hole here, but uh, it's good questions. So shift tab should be good. Play it back, double check, yes, yes. Okay. So now, um, should go through and do a save, just to double check, we're good. And then we're gonna be going to step eight here, and we're gonna get our, our shapes activated a little bit further. So we'll go ahead and copy that bit of orange code there, and we're gonna, we're gonna paste it just before the if conditional uh, in draw. So there's only one if conditional as of now. So we'll go in there. I like to make a couple of bumper padding spaces. Do a shift tab so everything looks nice and straight. And we could just hit play and see what happens and then talk about it. So now all this stuff is rotating, or not rotating, pulsating. It was rotating. It's pulsating and it's rotating. It's doing the same stuff it was doing before, only now it's also pulsating, shifting in scale from the origin point. So, and it's also nice now that these are larger, you can see there's a tiny bit of transparency because I did add a, a fourth value, an alpha channel. So what's going on here? We have two new variables that we pasted up here earlier, which were resize and grow. Well, this is where we're actually finally using them in step eight. At the beginning, we just declared them, resize and grow are zero, zero. So when this starts, this program starts, we have an if condition in draw. It's asking if resize is zero, which it is. So that condition is met, it's true. Therefore, we're executing everything that's happening inside of these brackets, which also contains a separate nested condition. And so what's happening is, because resize is equal to zero, 
we are changing the grow to increase by one every time um, draw is being uh, looping, every time it's looped, which is like what, 30 or 60 times a second. Then once it reaches 100, if there's a separate condition, and note that this condition is only being queried or checked if resize is zero, right? It's, it's nested with inside of that condition. So two things have to be met here. And it's, it's asking, is grows 100, right? If grow is equal to 100. If it is, we're reassigning resize the value of one. We're changing the value of resize to equal one. One equal sign. Two equal signs is testing a value. One equal sign is assigning a value to whatever's on the left side of the operator. And um, we will also note that now, if resize ends up being one instead of zero, this is no longer true, meaning all of this is no longer executed, but this is now true, meaning all of this will be executed. It's the opposite. Grow is minusing itself. Once grow equals zero, Resize is zero. Once resize is zero, this is activated again. So we've essentially just created a switch. And using that switch called resize, we are then allowing a change to happen using these variables. Does, who has questions on this? Like, I know it's a pretty funky thing to like wrap your head around. We kind of covered it a little bit last class with um, you know, like grow equals grow plus one. We went over that. But now we're like we're relating one thing to another. And we're nesting conditions. Wait, uh when uh when do you use like the two equal sign versus just the one? Yeah, that's a good question to bring up. So this is literally just um, just a sign, uh, not assigning. This is checking a value. So um, what's the proper term? I always forget the names here. Um, uh, operator, I believe it's an operator where it's. It's questioning, we're asking a question, if this is equal to, um, I think we probably could search here to see if there's any additional ways that we can. Um, uh, can I pitch in a little bit with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's basically a Boolean. Uh, Booleans are basically, if it's true or if it's false, and using the double equal sign kind of compares, like is this thing, equal to this thing and it's either going to output true or output false. Now if it outputs true it's going to run whatever's underneath but if it's false it won't. Right if it's false it just bypasses all this. And so yeah basically by using the double equal sign it's saying like kind of just like you're saying comparing um, if one thing is equal to something else and it will either output like I said true or false. Mm -hmm. All right, dope. That that makes sense. Yeah, and then the one equal sign is just assigning a new value. So we're we're calling okay, grow is going to equal grow plus one. I've went through in the past and done it reverse, and you end up getting an error like grow plus one equals grow, and it just doesn't run that way. You get an error. You need the left hand side to be um this component i wait i just had one more question uh yeah. 
uh, to you and Eric about the Boolean comparison. If I set a variable to, z to zero and then ask if resize equals that variable, will it work or will it not? Because it's asking variable not zero. Theoretically, at least I haven't tested it out a whole lot with this, um, but theoretically it would still Okay. Did he drop out like uh like I heard him? Yeah, he, he kind of muted. Eric, are you still Yeah, I, I'm still here. My mic just muted itself for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it's basically, it's, even if it is a variable, that variable still has a number in it. Um, at least with stuff that I do with coding, it's, it's, it's useful to have a variable that can change a number and then change that number later to make a different comparison. So. All right, dope, thanks. Yeah, the uh, equal thing is uh, using one or using two, it's easy to forget. I mean, the program will generally give you, spit out some references in the console that you're doing something wrong. Um, and also you always have this to access, right? If you have it saved, so you can always look at it later. Um, just like what I did when I was coming in here to reformat this from Java to JavaScript, I went into what I already writ wrote for the part one for the audio segment, copied it, pasted it in here. Um, because I'm not yet familiarized with all of this, the syntax, like the differences in syntax, and it's easier just to paste something if you don't have to type it all out, right? So it's nice to have these things for reference. You can come back in and review and refamiliarize yourself. So um, all these images you guys can click on if you need to look at things in detail later. Um, right. So if everybody's grappling with this logic here, we're going to go on to step 10. Um, this is the longest copy that I have here. So got to be kind of slow and patient going down. Otherwise you'll select the whole freaking page. Um, I'm going to copy all of that and we're creating a new function here. Um, and we're not really getting into too much of creating new functions. Um, you guys can explore more obviously. Um, you can create your own functions that gets into like object orientation, which, you know, if you guys have coded before, you totally should be dealing with some kind of objects. But for here, we're just going to be copying and pasting this underneath of draw. So literally at the very bottom, we'll return a couple lines down and paste this in. Uh, and then I'm going to do a shift tab. And I have like chest pressure. I never did get tested the other day. I probably need to re, re sign up again. I um I went, I drove, i I made an appointment at uh Rite Aid? No. Walgreens. I don't know. I can't remember now. Rite Aid, I think it was Rite Aid. And drove like 25 minutes away because I wanted to get one next day. Drove all the way there, waited in line for 15, 20 minutes. And then I got to the window, they couldn't print my paperwork. So I said, oh, they're just having an issue, drive around. I did that three times. Then I went and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go shopping and I'll come back. So I went and grabbed some groceries, came back, they still didn't have. So I was like, I spent like two hours waiting that never got to me. So I set another appointment for Saturday, then I forgot, I got so busy. I was talking, I'm getting a lot of uh, like pressure. Um, okay, we pasted this. Command tab, I did. And then play. And we should now, mine's muted, but we should now have the ability at either hitting either arrow Mainly, I'm going to be focusing on the left for ET. 
we can click on it and the background shapes stop moving. Our background stays the same and the audio stays the same, right? Like the only thing that's changed is like those shapes stop moving. Why is it that we haven't gone to another scene? Well, if we come in here, mouse pressed, first I'll break this down. Mouse pressed is literally just checking to see if your mouse is pressed at all on the canvas. That's its sole purpose. Doesn't matter where you are, what's going on, if your mouse is pressed, it'll execute whatever's inside of here. So from that point on, we're creating like sub conditions. And so again, like I normally like to do, I like to have some spacing in here between each component. So I have this if scene zero and then ends, I return a couple down. If scene is one, end scene one, return down, and then two. And so, we have these sub conditions that also require certain things to happen within mouse pressed before it will execute anything. So we have nested a nested if that's questioning if seen is zero by default, we know that that is true. So it'll continue on the next if condition is asking if your mouse coordinates are in a specific location, which I'll just tell you for right now and make it, uh, make it easy, which is this left button location. It's not perfect because the location is based off of, um, you know, a square or rectangle and the button is technically circular, but it's this location. If we're pointing here and we're in scene zero and we click, it will execute these two things. So we clicked, you know, there, or we clicked here on the right arrow, and the scene changed, and other audio started looping, but we didn't see a change in the background, and we, we didn't um, get the elevator music to stop. Why is that? Because we never told it to stop? Totally, that we know of. So if we look, say I'm gonna be referencing the, again, the ET, which is the, this scene zero, left button. Um, we're telling the program that scene has a new value of one. So if we go up and we look and draw, as of right now in draw, we did all that math for the resize. And then we have this condition in draw that's if scene is zero, we're gonna do something. But then we don't even have an if scene is one. We don't even have that. So by default, yeah, it wasn't pausing anything because we didn't tell it to pause. And it's not drawing anything because we're not telling it to draw anything. The last thing that it drew was just staying on the screen as a static image. So we need to have another, another like block here, another condition for scene one. So we're gonna go down and copy and paste this chunk from line 12. And we're gonna put this at the bottom of draw, like inside of draw still, underneath the scene zero. And I'm going to return this um, scene one and two apart from one another so that they're visually separated. And now, if we're clicking on that left arrow and scene is one, then we should get a different background. 
So if we hit play and we go through and we click on that, we do get the other background and we still get the audio playing, but we never lose the elevator music. So uh, we could always go in here now, since I've already put this in, and just delete these comments for these pauses on scenes one and two. And this is essentially pausing everything else that I could think of that could be playing from a different scene once I come into this new scene. It's like preemptively saying, okay, we're, we left that other scene. We don't need to hear that other stuff. We don't need to see that other stuff. Let's draw a new background. Let's pause all that other audio. All of this audio stuff could, in theory, go down in mouse pressed. Um, because it's not like a play. If we had a play up here in draw, it would just sound horrendous, right? It would be like looping the play. Um, but pauses we could totally have in either location. Um, so it's kind of like we're mirroring the same setup in, in, in draw, where we have these if conditionals for like if, if what scene we're on. And in the mouse process, we also have these if scenes as well. And they just do different things. Draw is drawing things to the canvas. Mouse press is doing things behind the scenes that we can't see. Right? Anybody have questions so far? I mean, as of, as of now, we have like a lot of stuff going on. And it's easy to get lost. Um, so I can totally, I can totally relate. Um, in the past, I've had uh, a student before. Um, I could tell they were kind of upset when I was going over the coding. And I tried to ask any, any questions with anybody. Um, and they didn't answer any questions or didn't ask any questions. And then partway through the class, they just got up and left the room. I'm like, oh, they must have been upset. I guess they'll, or, you know, I didn't really know exactly the time, but. They left and never seen them again. They just dropped the class because they thought it was too hard, but they didn't, <laughs> they went through half the semester and then uh, didn't uh, you know, try to go through this. So, I mean, as long as you're keeping along and you're asking questions, I think it's pretty easy to, to see what's going on. It's just, um, I guess some people just can't overcome the uh, personal, like limitations that you might set on yourself or something. So I'm just bringing this up because I know that a lot of, I should have a lot more questions and trying to coax you guys. Like I can't give you candy, but I would. And actually, um, last semester was the first semester that I couldn't have my uh, semi-annual Coding with Donuts workshops. You probably, if you're uh, been around DMS, you probably have probably have seen posters up at some point, or printed pages or whatever. But um, oh yeah, I used to get two dozen Paula's donuts, and everybody went ape shit for 15 minutes before we crashed. Sounds like a good time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have that internal question like, God, should I eat breakfast today? Or should I just eat like three donuts and feel like garbage? And you know goddamn well right that you're going to go with the latter. Like, come on. Because who wouldn't? Yeah. Healthy people. Which I am, but there's just some times where, you know, you just – you just really need to feel like garbage. <laughs> and they're Paula's, so, you know. I recently had like a really favored donut here in Rochester. Um, it's like a vegan place. 
and I got like an apple. I'm like, oh, give me an apple fritter. That sounds good. And I came back and it was like three times the size of any apple fritter I've ever had. And I ate half of it, which was like one and a half of Paula's donuts, or at least, at least one of them. And uh, it was super greasy. So, and everybody praised it. So after that, I'm like, man, Paula's is really good. Hey, what place is this? Donuts Delight? <laughs> I, I'd have to look up names. I don't remember. It was Rochester. Um, Misfits, Donuts Delight. I didn't go. I, my friend and his, his um, girlfriend's vegetarian, or uh, is vegan. I, I thought maybe the name would look familiar, but... Oh, I've been to the Red Fern. That's pretty good. Huh. It might have been. I don't know. Bummer. I forget the name. Um, okay. Side tangent complete. I feel good about that. I'd feel better with donuts now, but you know, we'll let it slide. God, I know what I'm getting tomorrow. All right. What the hell are we doing? We're doing something. Uh, oh, we're thinking logically right now. That's what we're doing. Right. Um, was that where we were? Man. Hold on, let me backtrack here. I think we just pasted like the step 12 and then we maybe were on 13. Yeah, let's maybe. see. Going forward, we decide which we prefer. Yeah, I had somebody um, from the first class ask like, well, why are we having, why are we setting it up like this? Couldn't we just make a list and then cycle through the list in this way and blah, blah, blah. I'm like. Totally, totally can do it. Um, I actually usually show another way to use mouse pressed. Um, there was a way in, in uh, processing where you can just put uh, mouse pressed in an if condition, like if mouse pressed and then write, um, write out what's gonna happen. Um, doesn't work here. I tried a few different ways. I, I thought I got it partially working, but I didn't. So um, just kind of defaulting to using the function for most of that stuff for now. But yeah, as you go along, you'll find other ways that may or may not make more sense of organizing. Um, sometimes things work off better, um, sometimes not. Um, I also will note as another little side tangent here, especially those who are maybe a little bit more advanced with coding. Um, and I don't know the specific um, outcome of this, but I know that it has helped me in the past. Um, this was when I worked in the past trying to figure out why I had a lot of, a lot of lag happening and um, I was fighting um, a memory limit with coding for Arduino. Arduino is very similar language. Um, I think it is uh, based on a Java library, like, like processing. And um, so I had a grad student from DMS actually come help me, um, Leonardo. Um, I think he, I think he actually did just finally graduate, even though he's been living in Mexico City, but uh, he was super, uh, super intelligent and he was really good with coding. And he showed me that this is something that I've always had in the examples, but I didn't quite know why, but um, you could actually have separate if conditionals for all these. So you could have if mouse X is greater than 14, and then you could have another if statement and run that next if statement and just have all these 
all these sub lines, right? Well, it makes more sense for the code if you chain things together because it's only reading one line of code at a time and then going on to the next. Um, so it ends up, it does end up, end up speeding up the processes somehow. Um, and it also does help once you get into um, chaining if statements together. So later I'm gonna show you an example where you would put else if. So you check if your mouse is in this location. If not, else is it in this location? And then um, you could end all of those with an else statement that does something if it's not in either of those locations. Um, and I think I do have an example of that further down the road if somebody needs it, but um, just kind of pointing out this in terms of um, tidying up code. There's various ways. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, yep. Deleted those other audio syntaxes now. So after line 14, um, if you've went through and deleted these little comment slashes um, for scenes one and two within draw, everything should go through and you should be able to click on all the different things seamlessly, right? Um, we also will now copy line 15, or the code from 15 here. And we're gonna put it within mouse pressed within scene one, which is the ET scene, right? So within scene one, we're going to paste this. So we have to figure out where scene one ends, which is that bracket there. I even commented it. And we wanna return down before that and paste, right? Could put it at the top, uh, this doesn't really matter in this case. And so if we play that back and we go, uh oh, Whoa, took a second to load there. I was like, I was getting impatient. I was about to just refresh the page. Once we go over to that scene, um, I'll just verify, take my mute off for a second. Yep. So we should have the ability to click on ET's little light up finger there, and we should get that audio feedback. Right. And I will note that if we keep clicking, we do get that reverb happening. Or not re, hmm, sounds like reverb, but it's really just, subs uh, I don't know, sequential playing of the same file over and over. So similar to reverb, but so if we didn't want that to happen right there where we're playing it, um, we could just put ouch.stop. Like I have there, just uncomment that, command T. And that should fix it, right? And then same thing, um, if we take the next chunk in line 15, step 15, and we paste this in scene two, the bottom of scene two. So there ends scene two, that bracket. So we can return down and paste and command T. And that already has the stop in there. Questions?
So I will go into uh, the next kind of extension here. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this last class or this class. Every semester I go through and um, ends up being like the same kinds of some kind of like pitfalls that people fall into with their projects and um, they don't feel as interactive as they could. And this next, these next bits kind of enhance your interactions and there's not a ton more effort. It's just thinking through them and setting them up. Um, like right now, we have the ability of clicking on these different places, yeah, to like do different things, but how do we really know to click on them? Um, like maybe the maybe these menu things could make sense and the area arrows can make sense um, But we don't get any visual You know cues that we can click there like So how can we make that a little bit more intuitive? That's what this new extension is going to get into So we're going to start off by um naming some new images and these are images that you already have in the assets folder so 17a we're gonna copy those three lines and i'm gonna paste them up with our other declared images once we have those declared we can go ahead and load them with the next three lines of code we'll put that in preload obviously and we'll put it down below all of the other images so everything's organized. Do a shift tab. And then finally, once we have these images named and called for, we can go ahead and uh, establish one of them to be used. So this third bit of code, we're gonna copy that we're gonna go into scene one under draw and paste it anywhere below the background. And that's important. We wanna make sure it's below the background. So we're gonna to go to draw, scene one. So we'll keep going here. There's background and it's just playing audio or pausing audio. So I'm just gonna go after those before scene one ends and paste this. Do a shift tab maybe. Okay. And now, if we go ahead and play this, might have to wait a second for new content to load in there. Might have to wait a uh, couple minutes. There we go. And so if we go to the ET scene and we go to hover on the menu, it now should give you a visual indication that, oh, there's something going on with this. Maybe I can click here, right? Same thing with the next. And to that point, um, not only could we apply a visual cue, but we could apply, um, you know, audible, something audible, like a chime or something, right? Or some kind of, some kind of indicator that we're talking about the menu. Similar to how we have like color themes, um, you know, like right now, this color theme is it's kind of just the same color theme as um, the finger, which is fine, but like maybe it should have been, you know, um, something relating to the background color of the main menu or something, right? But, um, and I want to just show you, I didn't go over this last class, we kind of cut it a little too short, but if we look in our assets folder, and we look at this like ET menu, ET next, the, those, those last two images that we were just uh, pasting in. They're full images. We use them as a full background. 
So it appears as if we have just new content popping up, right? Like that's just that one specific spot. It's, it's not, it's the full image. And I can show you guys um, how to kind of go about that process. Uh, I had a quick question sure. on uh, the step, uh, like I think it's 15. Okay. Uh, so it's so it's asking us to paste two like interactions into there, uh, but one of them it said it says to put both of them under scene one, and I don't think you want think, Jack singing one under scene one. I think if you also, refresh if you refresh the page, it should update. I changed uh, that. Oh, oh yeah, okay, I see it now. And also I, I think oh okay, maybe that fixed the other well the other one is uh under under scene two, uh, maybe you fixed that one too. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I changed a couple of things right before class, um, right after running into them in the last class. That's why it's a little smoother. Um so you probably just had the tab open from the last exercise, I'm assuming. Oh uh, yeah, but I one of those interactions I think is already included in the the step ten code at the end. It's already in there. The that one interaction with the the what's oh. this? Um, what's this stop? Yeah, the the if this if the mouse is clicked on this, then you play the what's this? That's okay. already part of the code from step ten. Yeah, let me double check here. Um, mouse pressed. Oh, look at this. It's loading so, so pleasantly. There we go. Um, scene two. Oh, this is slow. My, my computer is probably slow because I opened Photoshop. Um, Yeah, what's this yeah, play? It's, stop. Yeah, it's like an extra copy of it because it was already in the step 10 code. Yeah, the, was the whole thing already there? It, it, it was just that block of the starting with that if then statement. It was if you scroll up to step 10, it's at the bottom of it. So this entire this entire chunk then? Yeah, you might. I'm, I'm just saying if you go to like, yeah, step, if you go to step 10, you can just take that part out so you can add it in afterwards. Yep. Um, so integrating a second scene and then this one was adding additional interactions. Oh, well, this isn't really an additional interaction. So this should be taken out. I don't know why it got stuck there. Funky. Good call. Good call. I, I I was thinking you should take that out of step ten rather than because it's because that interaction's already in step ten. This would be it. Yeah, so the way I'm reading it is um this step we're enhancing interactions with with uh rollovers and this isn't um is it a background oh yeah it is i'm sorry i was thinking it was um doing pausing or something yeah you're right um step 10 which is was it this? Yeah. So yeah. that's, yeah. So that's, yeah. There you go. Fancy. Oh, fancy days. Okay. We did 17 all the way through. Nice, nice. And now, uh, I want you guys to activate the light finger by yourself. So the one thing I will cover now first though, is 
um, if we take this print line component from 17B, we can paste that in. Um, we could actually put it in draw or in mouse pressed. Um, if you put it in draw, it's going to continually spit out stuff. So I, I would say you might want to prefer putting it in mouse pressed. Um, I don't know. It can go either way. Because if you're getting something that's close to like a button, you know, and you want to you want to map that out. If you have to click there, so I'll just play this. If you paste it to the top of mouse breast, holy smokes, this is taking a while to load. Oh, I know why. I want to show you guys something with Photoshop, and then I'll let you um, do something here. So if you're trying to map stuff out, you can click anywhere now, and it'll print out the mouse X, mouse Y numbers for you. And they're all in one line, right? I only did one print function. They're all in one line separated with like a, a comma that I told it to print. So if I want to map out like the beginning and ends of this, you know, this, this, uh, um, where I'm going to place an image or something, I, I can click there and I get the coordinates, but then I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like gone. So if you wanted them to be live updates, you also could just put this in uh, the, stop, the, the top of draw, and then it would just be constantly printing them out and you just point, you just point where you want them. So it could be helpful for either way. Um, having them be clickable is then like, well, you go in, you, you have it for reference. You don't have to remember two numbers and do all the typing. So before I let you guys hop into that, I wanna show you Photoshop here so I can close this. Um, let's see, open up ET PSD. So I have this in here. Um, I previously made this obviously in the past and I have the Photoshop document somewhere. I just didn't dig it up. It's on another computer. So I just selected those white chunks, um, made new content and put it over top as a copy. And then I went through and just did some blending options, like outer glow, right? I changed, I, I put a solid color um, over top of it. And then you export this as a full image. And then when you want the other one to be, you just turn one off and you turn the other on, you export that. So similar to that process that some of you had to go through for your audio projects where you have to export multiple tracks, uh, you know, multiple exports from one audio file, one Audacity file. Same thing here, right? You're kind of creating your own assets, so to speak. Um, and so there's there could be some good things too in here like, um, Bevelin and Boss, you could have something look like it's, um, oh, I did the wrong one here. So if we do like Bevelin and Boss, we could either choose an up or down effect, right? So you can make it look like the button is up and then you press it and it goes down. But if you do work with like a down state, um, you probably have to, you probably won't be able to use uh, the mouse pressed. You'd have to use mouse released. You know, like mouse, if mouse is pressed, you could load this image. And then, you know, because um, if you use mouse pressed, as soon as you tap it, you won't even see the down. So it's just like using Photoshop to generate your content based on if you're, having buttons or interactions or, or whatnot. Oh, darn, I did do one for the finger. and I think I deleted it without saving it. Hoop. Um, so yeah, I want you guys to try to build that out. Uh, it's loading this image in. So see if you can get that working. The image is already in your assets. You just need to name it. Uh, declare where it's loading from, and then um, load it in. And I will note to you 
that we already have the locations of the coordinates for the finger because we already have an audio effect playing when we click there. So you could either look up like the new coordinates using your, your print function there, or you could um, just copy the coordinates that we have from the mouse press. And yeah, I'll just, I'll just sit here and uh, wait for questions. And from there, if you get, if you, sorry, if you get through that, you can just continue on. There's like a couple other things um, uh, worth, worth exploring before you guys leave for the day. Yeah, question? Yeah, I'm having trouble doing the rollover where you, I, 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 you paste, it says paste it anywhere below the background in scene one under draw. And I am not sure exactly where I'm putting that or okay. if I'm putting that in the correct place. Yep. So um, I'm going to go up to draw. So here's draw. And then I'm going down to find scene one. So that's scene zero. And then down here, scene one. And so the background is right there. So we want to place it below that background. And reason being is because we're going to be drawing a second background, but only when we're in those locations. And if we have this newly pasted background after that one, we should see the second one, right? We, from order of operations, whatever's um, read last, we will like see that image last. Is that? Does that answer what you're? Yeah, I'm just, uh, somehow I have all of the, oh wait, um, I, I, I have like all of the, you, sh you should scene, have, all of the scene defining things. I think I have it in the mouse, in the, in the mouse pressed function. And it's working somehow. It's like not under a draw function. So when I paste that there, it's not, I, I'm just really confused. Yeah, you can share your screen. I can, I can look okay. over it with you. Okay, so I have, so this is where my, this is like my whole draw function right here. And yeah. then yeah. I have the mouse pressed. So, so yeah, you you missed a few steps here. Um, so if you scroll oh. up a little bit, you see um, the last thing you have in draw is a scene zero. Yeah. Yeah. So we so that, we, we want stuff after that scene zero before before draw ends. Yeah. And so so I need basically more copies of this. Yep, and I, I have. Scene. Yep, and I have that on the page. Let's see what number it was. Um, it was step twelve. Oh, okay. See what I think I did. I think I just copied that whole thing into the C one. See, I tried to like paste it here. Hmm. Oh. And. But, worked for some reason and I that's why I didn't catch it because I have this whole that whole setup under mouse press not draw mm -hmm. so so should I just paste this into there into the draw um, yeah it looks good um, okay well I don't know what the if scene to pitch I don't know I, I don't know I don't know I'll figure it out though that 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 solves my question though yeah. Yeah, it is it is a little um convoluted in that regard to to try and um um keep track of the two like, you know, we have we have these two basically identical setups, you know. Um, yeah. And that's why it was nice to have that option in processing that allowed you to have um mouse presses in draw but so far I haven't found the solution for it. 
I seen there was a mouse pressed that you can like call a function and then type dot mouse pressed, but that's only like to call a function. Yeah, it's working so, now. Sweet, great. Yeah, I'd see if you can um, get get that finger light going. Just a, it's a good step um, to uh, validate that you know you've gotten the steps down. And then if you've gone through that, um, either in class now today or uh, continuing on, I'm just gonna sit in here. I told the first class. I'd sit in here and follow through all the rest of the steps so that um, I'd have it recorded. And then this way everybody can access it later. So, um, you know, if you don't have questions and you get through this finger deal, um, you guys are good to go. Otherwise, I'm going to stick around and walk through the rest. So, um, I'll just wait a minute and make sure nobody has questions on the finger pasting like finger establishing piece. I didn't have my video going this whole time. Oh, I suppose I could walk through it. Oh, I have it declared. Ah, it is declared. Yeah, I think we just had to write like the if statement mm -hmm. for it. Man, my, my, my frantic uh, finalizing of this was like two minutes before my last class started. So it was a little rough around the edges. Um, what am I doing? Oh, I'm going to get Um, ET ouch. Boom. Okay. 
Um, I'm hoping you guys got that. It was just one line of code. One line? Three lines. One if conditional. Um, probably a good time to save as well. Um, and uh, even if I'm done or you know before you guys are like done with this today in general, it's it's gonna be good for you to um, if anything was a little weird or you had like a aha moment, you know, um, I'd make sure you go back in your code in those places and just write yourself a note that something to like remind yourself of what was going on. Um, that'll definitely help later. There's been so many times each semester, um, same things happen. You know, students know that, oh, I can access this to help me, you know, structure my project, but then they open it up and they don't know what's going on, even though they did the whole tutorial. So hopefully just, um, Trying to keep things moving smoothly. Logically, oh, we're already past this. Print. Ah, okay, we're on step 18 now. So, um, we're gonna be adding the arrow, like images for the arrows uh, on the main menu. However, it's not going to be updating the full background. We're going to be calling a background or like an image over top of a background. So um, starting to get like, you know, a sense of layering happening. And in uh, the way that we're going to be doing it, the image is going to be static in one spot based on a rollover. But, it, you know, once you know how to call that image in that way, um, you can call images however you want, right? Like location of them is updating based on whatever values. Um, scale of them maybe changes. Opacity of the images change. So um, we're going to copy this from 18. And uh, looks like we're add this code to the bottom of scene one under draw. Just going to collapse that. Wait 45 minutes for this to open. My computer sounds so overwhelmed. Why are you overwhelmed, computer? Oh, I think it's also because it, I'm recording. I just have to be patient. Um, lost my train of thought. Bottom scene one under draw. So long draw. Do, 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 do. Where are you? Draw right here. Yes. Okay. At the bottom of scene one. That in scene one. There we go. Okay. And let's play and see. Nothing. What did I do wrong? Hmm. I didn't get this far in the other class, so. Um, well, let's check our coordinates, maybe. And mouse pressed, if we have scene zero, we click the left button. So how about we just take these coordinates and we paste them here. Does that fix the problem? No. Hmm. Funky, funky fresh. Well, how about, oh man, this 
lag is uh, rough. Maybe. Man. Okay. Um. Did anybody else uh, paste this and not get it yet? Yeah, mine didn't work either. Hmm. Interesting. Let me do this. I will open my editor on another page. I don't know how this is going to work yet, but um, part two. This should be the complete sketch. If I play it. And I hover, it, it, it works. So let's take a look here. Where am I? This is scene, here's scene one. Hmm. I did else ifs, but that shouldn't matter. So let's see. Whoa. Which now? Can't even like get to my escape menu here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the one on the right is the the good one. And this is the line of code versus, is it the line of code? No, it's the one above it, right? The image left arrow at the top. Oh, or wait. Where Never is mind. this? Oh, I think you pasted it into scene zero. Oh yeah, maybe I just typed wrong. It's supposed to be in scene zero. Holy schmokes. I was beyond confused. <laughs> yes. Okay, that makes sense now. <laughs> See, group effort, high fives all around. Let's take this sucker out of there. Man. Oh yeah, look at that glory. Smoking. So, um, I think that was about it. I thought there was actually um, another quick thing. Wasn't there, or just kind of, uh, yeah, I guess just saying that you can complete it on your own if you wanted more practice. I Since there was a lot of stuff, like different scenes, um, and I started focusing on one to add more stuff, we left the other one empty. Um, it could be nice to go, you know, like tomorrow, dive back in, make sure you're, just like, I don't know if you've ever learned an instrument, right? You, you kind of play every day. Um, could be good to hop back in, like tomorrow, just look over things, see if you could add another button or sound effect or whatever that I have in the assets. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, you do want to make sure you save, comment anything you want. Um, the complete sketch is on here at the bottom. So, you know, if you do run into problems or whatever, you could always, um, I guess it's a little harder since it's on P5 on the web, but you could always um, create a new sketch and a new window, do the same thing, like load the assets in there, uh, save it as a different name, and then you have the two to compare. So it is a little bit more of a lengthy uh, 
comparison process, but totally anybody, if anybody has questions, I'm here. Otherwise I'll uh, see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, when we're trying to place the right arrow, uh, do we just keep like guessing where exactly it should go? Like, like the X value for it? Yeah, pretty much. Um, that's why that's a, originally why I introduced you guys to the print for the values. Um, cause well, yeah, then, then you can kind of like estimate it based on where you click and then, yeah, uh, does it, Get it close. Does it does it still place the image from like the top left corner of it or something, or? Yeah, it'll still be the top left. Yep. From the from the top left of of the right arrow image, though, not like the origin point of the whole thing, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. That makes it easier. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Sweet. Yep. See you. How's it going?